Hey Crafter, I am so excited to be bringing you today's video. It's something I've wanted to try for so long and that is tie dyeing yarn. I'm going to show you how I tie dyed a completed crochet project as well as a skein of yarn. I'll go over the specific materials I'm using in just a moment, but the most important thing is to use a 100% natural yarn like 100% cotton versus a blend or synthetic fiber so that our colors won't end up dull. So let's jump into tie dyeing yarn. All right, so this is the yarn I'm going to be using. It's Hobby Lobby's I Love This Cotton. It's 100% cotton, and I'm going to dye both a little square that I crocheted up and just the plain yarn, and I'll show you how I prep both of these and show you how I dye them. All right, so with this one, I'm just going to kind of fold it up, crumple it up, and rubber band it, and we'll stripe it and do different stuff. Okay, so that's ready to be dyed in just a second. Then with the rest of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around like a chair or like someone's hands and just wrap it in a loop a bunch of times. And then I'm gonna rubber band all down the big kind of circle of yarn. It'll make sense when you see it. So I've wound the whole skein around the top of a chair back and I'm going to take it off and rubber band it in sections. And here it is after adding rubber bands. So if you watched my video a few weeks back about tie-dyeing t-shirts, this is the same kit that I used then. It's Tulip's one-step tie-dye kit, and it was very easy to use. Basically what I'm showing here is mixing up the dye. The kit came with bottles pre-loaded with dye, and all I had to do was add water to the fill line. I also had an extra color packet that didn't come with a bottle, so I just used a water bottle, poked a hole in the lid, added a dye packet to the bottle, and added approximately four ounces of water. Once you've added water to the dye, be sure to shake thoroughly. But the kit comes with all the instructions for mixing and everything pretty straightforward. So as you can see, I have my project set up on a cooling rack over a cookie sheet with newspaper to catch any runoff dye. Also, my dye bottles might look a little empty at this point because this is after tie dyeing five t-shirts to create that previous video. And lastly, when you're working on this, be sure to wear gloves so that way your hands don't get stained. But basically, I'm just squeezing the dye onto the crochet project. I'm sticking with one color per section, but really there's no right or wrong way of where to add the color, just make sure you have fun with it. You might notice the dye has a little bit of trouble absorbing into the yarn, so be sure to add plenty of dye and also give it time to absorb into the yarn. Once I added as much color as I wanted to the already crocheted piece, it was time to dye the skein of yarn. For the yarn skein, I used a wet dye method, which is exactly what it sounds like. I first dunked the skein of yarn into a pitcher of water, squeezed out the excess water, and then I dyed it with the tie dye. The dye absorbs in a lot faster if the project is already wet, but I think the colors end up not quite as vivid simply because the dye is less concentrated. But the good news with tie dye is that there are a lot of methods and techniques, each with their own pros and cons, but at the end of the day, you're going to end up with a fun, unique project. So whether you decide to dye wet or dry is totally up to you. Either way, don't be afraid to add a lot of dye to your project. I personally like the bright vivid colors, so I tried to make sure the dye was soaking all the way through my project. After I added as much dye as I wanted to the yarn, I wrapped each piece in plastic wrap, and I didn't film this step, so that's why you see me wrapping a t-shirt in plastic wrap, not the yarn. But for sake of illustration, this is the same thing I did with the yarn. Originally, I planned to let my project sit for the minimum six to eight hours, but then life got crazy and they ended up sitting until two nights later or about 34 hours total. But once your project has set for about six to 24 hours, it's time to rinse out the dye. Now, I should have worn gloves for this step, but I forgot and ended up with bluish green hands for a couple of days. But basically, I'm just rinsing and rinsing and rinsing and rinsing until the water runs clear, or at least until it runs clear enough. I got a little impatient at this step, but the goal is to rinse as much of the excess dye out as possible. After I finished rinsing out the yarn, I threw it into the washing machine with the tie-dye t-shirts, I washed with detergent and cold water per the instructions for this particular dye, hung it up to dry, and then the yarn was ready to use. All right, so it's time to reveal the tie-dye yarn. So at this point, I have washed them in the washing machine once, and then I just hung them up to dry. Now, originally I was going to hang this up to dry some kind of different way, because I was afraid that the center sections of the yarn might not dry very well, but then I never did anything with it. And honestly, it dried just fine when I left it in the laundry room with plenty, with plenty of bright sunlight and good air circulation. Now, one other quick note about the yarn skein. When I washed it, I washed it just straight as is. 
So exactly what this is, I just threw this in the washing machine. I meant to put it into a garment bag so that way on the off chance one of these elastics broke, then it wouldn't be a big tangled mess. But I didn't because I forgot to, but fortunately it held up very well. But that might be an idea of putting it in a garment bag or in a pantyhose or something like that so it doesn't unravel. But if we go ahead and look at this, I'll share some thoughts. I'll wind this into a ball and crochet a little bit of something with it. But let's look at the little square here. So first of all, it took the dye pretty well. The vividness is pretty good. I would say it's matching to the t-shirts I did, possibly even just a smidgen brighter. Now these sections here that didn't have any dye directly on them, they all have a little bit of a blue tint. So the dye did run a bit when I was washing it in the sink and when I washed it in the washing machine. But the dye took to it really well. I was very happy with that. The one thing that is a little goofy is the yarn feels a little, I guess stiff perhaps is the word, or crunchy. And something I love about this specific cotton, which is Hobby Lobby's, I love this cotton, is it is super soft for a cotton, it feels very nice. And this still feels soft and nice, but not quite as nice as it normally does. So the best way to describe it is have, if you've ever washed your clothes and then perhaps you had too much detergent in there or the rinse cycle didn't run correctly, and there was still a bit of soap left in your clothes and your clothes kind of had a crunchy feel. That's what this has a little bit, but honestly, it's not a big deal. I'm not really doing anything specific with this, but I could use it as a hot pad and as a hot pad. If the fabric is a little crunchy, not a big deal. It really just feels like other brands of cotton where it's a little more stiff and less soft and silky feeling. Same with the skein of yarn. This definitely feels very crunchy, but something else that I noticed is the yarn kind of pilled a little bit. You can see along here, a little hard to tell, but if you look right in there, you can see how it's pilled. You can't see it very well in camera, but it's like that pretty much all over the yarn. If I pull it apart, you can kind of see those fibers in the green there. And as I get to the center, it kind of does the same thing. I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think it like ruined the yarn or anything, but that just is something to note about the texture. All right, so now I have a very daunting task ahead of me. I'm gonna take the rubber bands off and then try to wind this into a ball of yarn. I kind of forgot to think about the part about after it was dyed because I thought about fastening it off. Like, yeah, it'll be great for the washing machine. I'm not sure how well this is gonna work to unwind it. We're gonna give it a go. And if this doesn't work well, I'll see if I can come up with another idea that might work better. But ultimately my goal here is to keep it as untangled as possible as I take these rubber bands off. So that way I can easily wind it into a ball of yarn. And you could also cut these rubber bands off if you want to minimize the chance of it tangling. But the yarn looks really cool. It looks really fun. Got a little bit of white there peeking through. Look at this, it looks so cool. All right, so I'm gonna kind of roll this and try to carefully, yeah, this is gonna be fun. I'm gonna kind of like spread it apart. Now, as we get closer to the center of the yarn, it's not as vivid, the colors, a little bit more white in there, but I think it'll still turn out pretty cool. So I'm just carefully pulling this, separating it a little bit. Carefully working in. And I can tell you this is gonna take a little bit of time so I won't include all of this in the video, but so far it's going well enough. Here's what the yarn looks like. And I'm just gonna start winding this end into a ball. So what I figured out worked best was to pull a bunch of slack, wind up that section, and then pull a bunch of slack. I'm just kind of resting my hand on top of the skein of yarn so that way as I pull, it kind of comes loose. Because towards the end, it gets a little bit tangly all the loops, but as long as I keep my hand on it to keep the whole thing from tangling up, it seems to work pretty well. And then once I've got a section all loosened up, I just wind it into my ball. All right, we are nearing the end here, almost done winding. And that's the last bit of it. So a quick note, for the most part, my colors were really consistent throughout. The only thing is some spots are a little more vivid, some spots are a little more faded. So you can see a lot of white over in this area here. Those are pieces that were closer to the center of my yarn bundle. And also some colors I applied more dye of than others and made sure to get it to the center better than others. So some sections, the dye went all the way through. Other sections had a lot more white or at least white-ish strands. Really these all have like purple tints and blue tints. It's a little hard to see on the camera, but in person you can still see that even these white sections are tinted at least. So here's a little swatch I've crocheted with this yarn and I think this turned out so cute. So basically I did three rows of single crochet down here at the bottom and then up here I did three rows of double crochet. So because I did my yarn with such short little runs, that means when I do single crochet, it's changing color really fast and it gets kind of just blended all throughout there. With the double crochet, there's not quite as many pops of color throughout it, but it still does change 
very much pretty much between every single stitch individual stitches are variegated but just really pretty and i think it's kind of fun and basically i've created a custom variegated yarn now of course you can do this however you want when you tie dye it you could stick with just two colors you can do instead of a bunch of short little sections do just two long sections so you have longer runs between colors however you want to do it but there you have it that is how to tie dye yarn that's my experience with it i do think this is such a fun project because it's a very accessible way to play around with dyeing your own yarn. And of course, like in my case, if you're already doing some tie-dye projects, like some tie-dye t-shirts like I did with my cousins, and you've got some yarn sitting around, you might as well try tie-dyeing the yarn because you can get some really neat results. So thanks so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you're going to try this. I'd love to hear how this goes for you. And of course, if you have any tips for tie-dyeing yarn or any tips for like how yarn is truly dyed by hand, be sure to leave those in the comments as well. And until next time, happy crafting.